the second one, or vice versa, and which one is the better one. Hopefully, we'll get the answer, or maybe not, we'll see. Uh, so basically, what we have under the hood of those two. In Elasticsearch, we have a bunch of scene 361, uh, like this table really still when Elasticsearch was developed. Uh, Elastic, the newer Elasticsearch versions will be based hopefully on using Pro. In Apache Solar, Pro, we all know we have Lucene for all with all the goodies, all the codecs and stuff you probably heard about and now sort of cloud and stuff like that. Basically, um, I'll try to compare not only the single server view of Solar, but uh, also the uh, cloud features because uh, Elasticsearch is narrow to the cloud, as you may know. It works on a single server, but was designed with cloud in, view, in mind. As and we have much solar for all because we have solar cloud, which allows us to use distributed indexing, searching, scale vertically, and things like that. First of all, some general view. What we expect from a search server architecture? We expect scalability, we expect fault tolerance, high level utility, and of course features. We want to use faceting, we want full text search queries, we want all of that. We want grouping, we want, we want collapsing. Uh, anyway, it's the same thing. We also want some spam queries, for, we also want filtering, and all things like that. But also, we are looking for the ease of installation. All the tools that are available out there, because not all of us uh, are pleased with the out-of-the-box features, won't like it. And finally, we would like to easily manage our instances, to create new, new nodes, to manage our clusters. That's what we expect. In Elasticsearch, of course, we've got all those things. Elasticsearch is distributed, it's all tolerant, on the contains of only Elasticsearch nodes, that's one thing. It has a single leader, made, uh, uh, something like a master, and it has an automatic leader election based on discovery. But we'll talk about it a bit later. Of course, it's highly durable, all tolerant as I told, and it scales. As Soul Cloud, we have similar things. It's distributed, all tolerant, it's based on Apache Solar, and of course, the Keeper Ensemble which handles all the needed things to keep SolarCloud running. It has leader per shard, as you probably heard today, and it, again, has automatic leader election, so when the shard goes down and it was a leader, the new leader comes up. Of course, if it's possible. Before going into much more specific details, I would like to say a bit about the index or collection architecture. In Solar, we have collection. It's the main logical index that can be spread among different shards, right? In Elasticsearch, the same, almost the same thing is called an index. It also has a shards, replicas, and stuff like that. And then collection and indices can be spread among nodes in the cluster to create distributed environment. In addition to that, Elasticsearch allows us to have a multiple type of documents in a single index. Uh, from a user perspective view, uh, the index is, index is divided into types. Each document has a type uh, connected to it. In Apache Solar, we can do that, but all those types share the same scheme. Of course, uh, in Elast as well as uh, Solar and Elasticsearch, both of those documents are still uh, written into the same index. But uh, Elasticsearch allows us to a bit more, a bit more complicated stuff when it comes to typing. Mm, some things about shards and replicas. Uh, as I mentioned, index and collections can have many shards. Each shard can have zero or more replicas. The more replicas, we have redundancy, we can scale the search. Replicas are automatically updated with the use of transaction mode in both cases. So we, can, we have durable updates. And replicas can be promoted to leaders when the leader shard goes offline. So if your node fails or anything bad happens or some nodes of the cluster goes offline. If you have a replica of such nodes, or no, nodes, shards, you can be sure that they will be promoted to new leaders and you will be still able to search and index data. However, there are sometimes uh, 
we are sometimes needed, at least in my work as consultant, it's uh, at least once, three, three months or something like that, struggle with the thing that our clients want to uh, control how the indexing is done. By default, Elasticsearch and Solar distribute the indices, uh, distribute the document between uh, shards in a manner of caching on the basis of the document ID. However, sometimes it's not enough. Imagine a situation when you would like to, uh, when you have an index containing thousands of your client's document, and uh, the client document base is, is divided uh, into users. And each user can only search in its given pool of documents. That's why you can optimize your indices if the amount of data is high, that uh, a single user can point it to a single shard, and there its documents are indexed into the one particular shard. And a query and when a query comes in, you would like it to be routed into that one particular shard. And both Elasticsearch and Solar allows that, although we will see mm, some, something. Just in some visualization. Let's say we have a collection or an index with eight shards. Uh, I didn't divide it into multiple nodes just for the ease of load. So we have eight shards of an index, and our application don't know where the data is. So what we have to do is we just want to query all the shards, gather the results, and return them. That's sometimes not needed because we know that, for example, the data is stored for that particular user in the third shard, and we want just to query because the other data will, for example, filter by a filter query. Um, what we can do with routing is we can do just exactly the same, but we can point our search server just that one particular shard. In this example, it's a third shard. So, what we can do in, in SOAR, uh, it requires some effort. It's, uh, we have to um, um, configure the proper update. Let's go a bit here. Update re request processing chain with the node distributing update processing factory, and we have to put the data there by, by knowing which shard we want. If the chart has a, if it's a leader, if not, it will be smooth. In Elasticsearch, we have something called routing. Routing parameter allows us to control which target, which chart will be targeted with the data or queries. Uh, of course, it defaults uh, to document identifiers, but can be changed to any value during runtime. You don't have to reload the configuration. So if we specify something like that, and we say that in the index, some text in the type text for the document with the ID one, we want it to be routed with that particular value. Elasticsearch will take the value, calculate the hash on it, and will put the data in the shard that is uh, evaluated by that, by that particular value. And during querying, you can see that a simple query will, will be routed with the same value. You can imagine that with hundreds of, uh, hundreds of uh, routing parameters, some data will land in the same shards, but when querying, you don't have to query all the shards. That's some improvement uh, over for performance that you can achieve if you can divide your data in the play okay. Let's get back a bit to the index structure now. Let's forget about routing and let's get back to the index structure. We can have, of course, SOAR is the schema structure, right? We have field types defined in schema, we have fields defined in schema. Of course, we can use the dynamic fields, we have the copy field uh, possibilities with the automatic copy between fields. And of course, one thing right now, it allows us to use custom similarity definition, all global ones and both per field similarity. It's great. Actually, we use it uh, in a field deployment and it's really great. We can customize the scoring for each field. It's useful. In Elasticsearch, we can say more or less Elasticsearch is schemaless. Uh, not that schemaless as we put data and we don't worry about the schema. Not that way. Elasticsearch tries to guess the data that is put there. On the first, when the first document is indexed, the um, Elasticsearch al analyzes it and tries to guess the, the type of the field. It can be painful if the guess is not right. Mm, that's uh, a thing you probably won't use in production. Maybe it's good when you push your data 
uh, like we have some data in the JSON, we want to put it right now, we want to test it, we want to play with it, we want our developers to go with it, but in real life you want to um, structure your data, you want to prepare the mappings, as it's called in Elastics. Alright, let's continue. Analyzers and filters are defined both with HTTP APIs and can be both set in the Elastic Search Configuration files. That's one thing very nice because you can create indices on the fly and specify the, the, field, type, the field type, the analysis. Uh, the same comes with the fields. Uh, there is a multi-field support. It's more or less the same as the um, copy field feature in SOAR. Elasticsearch allows you to get multiple fields with similar names, let's call it, and the data will be um, copied into the multiple fields. Uh, for example, for different field for searching, different field for faceting, but uh, all uh, with a similar name. One for example name and one name.fast. Allows for nested documents, which is nice. You can nest documents, you can have one primary document and you can have multiple nested documents that will land into the same chart and you, you can be sure of that. Allows parent-child relationship in the index time. That's one thing because we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, you can specify the parent of the document you are currently indexing. Uh, so, if you want to index the main document, you can specify the, the, the parent. And for example, you can index the main document and the tags for the document as each tag for a different document. Then you can, using the partial updates, for example, remove or you can delete all the, all the child documents. And allow structured data. You can send structured data and Elasticsearch will uh, get those and flatten it for you. Because, as you know, Elasticsearch is based on the scene and we don't have the ability yet to have the uh, relationships uh, in the index. Uh, both, uh, both Elasticsearch and Solar allows for some degree of index manipulation, extra not the index and the index structure manipulation. Uh, in both cases it's possible to some extent you can for example add new field to the index is not a problem. Uh, you can't change integer to string or you can't change numeric types, right? Because two symbol will blow up. Uh, that's usual. But for example, in Elasticsearch, you can change it, uh, change a single field to a multi-field, and uh, uh, in the index your document, you will have two, three, or many fields. But that's similar, you add the copy field and re-index document and so on, and you get exactly the same behavior. Let's get to the other thing. Uh, so allows you to al alias course. Uh, it's currently, as I remember, marked as experimental uh, feature. Yeah, looking at the committers. Uh, thanks. Uh, Elasticsearch, on the other hand, allows you to create some kind of uh, SQL views. You can, uh, uh, with an alias, uh, create it for an index. For example, you want you will have a Again, let's get back to the users example. We have multiple users and we want to get the users only the view of their data. We can create an alias, for example, named by the user name or something like that, and we can add filters to the alias, we can add routing search on a certain index time, and we can just say, okay, use that alias, and you will get only the data you are, you are allowed to. That's something, something pretty fine. Index can have multiple aliases, there can be multiple aliases in Elasticsearch, something like that. The server configuration. Um, static install config for solar can be reloaded during a collection of core reloads. Uh, for example, if you store it in Zookeeper and you update it, you will be able to reload it when the core collection of core reloads. Uh, in Elasticsearch, you can set the static parameters in Elasticsearch.yml. Uh, property file and some of the properties. I don't don't know so how many, how much of those don't know the percentage value. But you can change some of the values during runtime without the need of restarting the server or the need to close re, uh, reload the indices or anything like that. I'll talk a bit. Uh, I'll talk about it uh, a bit later. There is a in solar. I didn't, uh, don't have a slide for it, but. In solar, your indices are stored locally. If you don't configure it, for example, in NFS or anything like that. 
In Elasticsearch, um, you have a gateway module, which is more or less your data and uh, metadata time machine. Uh, it, store, it can store, because uh, it, not only, it not always stores indices, but it's used to store metadata. Currently available, you have the local default one, and the one that is said to be used because it's most tested. Uh, you have the shared file system, you have the Hadoop, and as the Amazon used S3, which you can use for storing your indices. Uh, and metadata, for example, if you use the shared FS uh, gateway, um, your, your uh, shared file system should be visible by all the nodes out there uh, in the cluster. So that's, um, if you would like to use it, however, even the wiki um, page of Elasticsearch says, if you don't have to use those three, use the local one. It's the default and it should be the best. Uh, the discovery. The process of discovery is the so process of discovering new nodes, adding new nodes to the cluster, adding, uh, managing the nodes. Apache Solar uses Zookeeper, as we all heard about. And Elastic, uh, Elasticsearch uses Zen Discovery. It's all module uh, and in a bit. What it, what it can do is for Elasticsearch, it's all. Oh, Automatic node discovery provides multicast and unicast discovery methods. So whenever your um, network supports multicast, you can use multicast. Whenever it's not supported, you can use unicast discovery and just say which nodes, which nodes are, should be in your cluster and it will be. Uh, uh, they will be pinged and talked to. It has an automatic master detection and of course two-way failure detection, master node feeding all the other nodes in the cluster and the nodes being the master to see if it's still alive, some kind of uh, heartbeat uh, mechanism uh, developed by Elasticsearch. Uh, in Solar we have Zookeeper, we heard about Zookeeper, it requires additional software, although it's not a problem, uh, at least from my point of view, because Zookeeper is very easy to install and uh, run. Mm, of course, uh, if you want, uh, if you don't want a single point of failure, you should have one of, uh, more than one Zookeeper instances. It prevents one thing that it prevents. And it's very uh, good from my point of view, again, as a consultant. It prevents split brain situations. I don't like being <laughs> mailed in the night and says, ah, you've got the cluster divided, and you've got two separate clusters out there that don't can't join each other because there was a split brain in the data when one and the second cluster. That's terrible. It's hard to get back to what it used to be before the split brain. Uh, Apache Zookeeper uh, handles that. You can't have uh, split brain in solar cloud. Uh, there are also um, possibilities in handling that in Elasticsearch by setting the minimum masters. So you should set the minimum master to be at least 50% plus one node in your of course, it can hold collection configuration and should, and so needs to know the addresses of one of the zookeeper instances in order to, keep, to talk to it. API. As you know, if I didn't ask one how many of you uh, know Apache Solar? Great. And now the other thing, how many of you know Elasticsearch? Okay. So, again, uh, both Solar and Elasticsearch allows <coughs> us to use query stream for queries. In Solar, um, the query stream is the most, or well, maybe not most convenient, but the method we use to query. In Elasticsearch, it's not only uh, the only method. We can and we should use the structured JSON queries in order to uh, make our queries. And they both provide a specialized Java API uh, in SolidJ for Sol Cloud. You should use the Cloud Sol server, which talks to Zookeeper and is quite nice. In order to do that, it knows which node to send the data. And in Elasticsearch for the remote connections, you use the transport client, and you have also the client like of it. It's basically almost full Elasticsearch that is instantiated. Ah, sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, when you uh, when you start the transport client, but it's, uh, for now at least it's 
needed. The work is being done by some people for allowing a bit of structure to transmit fire. Uh, Apache Solar and Query String, you all probably both of you know Apache Solar, so some of the pre uh, of structure is allowed. For example, uh, with local parents and stuff like that, a simple query looks like that, nothing, nothing unusual. In Elasticsearch, uh, we can build queries or, or with the request to parameters, simple ones, but most queries should be done, the most complicated ones should be, should be done and send as JSON object to a proper, uh, proper REST endpoint. For example, the first is the uh, simple request part, and the second is a structured JSON query. Almost the same, but <coughs> almost, because the query about will be the match, and here we have the third query, which is not analyzed. Uh, but, as you can see, there is some structure. You can, uh, if you don't know Elasticsearch, uh, as most of the audience don't know, you can uh, nest multiple elements in the query, so you can combine queries, some of the queries um, can be multiple, can have multiple levels of nesting, as well as uh, filtering, faceting, and stuff like that. Um, data can Solar allows multiple formats as input and can result can output results in multiple formats. If you want XML, if you want JSON, if you want Commas-created values, you can do that in solar, that's not a problem. In Elasticsearch, things are simple. JSON in, JSON out. Single or batch. Sim As you know, solar can, in a single request with indexing data, you can add multiple documents per request. It's not a problem. Single or multiple documents in a request, just an XML or a JSON, and you send it. In Elasticsearch, uh, a standard indexing request is a single document per request, but you have two endpoints. The first one, the bulk, is the endpoint exposed for batch indexing. You can have multiple documents in a document, but the documents have to be structured so that additional information is provided, like ID, the index, and the type. Uh, there is a second endpoint, the bulk UDP endpoint, that for low latency indexing, but should be, also, should be only used when you are not afraid of losing your data. You know how UDP works, and it can, if there is a network failure or anything like that, you can use your batch. Both search servers provide partial document updates. They are not, by, not based on the 3.8, uh, 37 uh, we've seen uh, Jira issue, which was proposed by Andre. Uh, what, it, the, what it does is actually it requires a stored field on the Elasticsearch uh, for uh, source. And it uh, just gets the, the original document and just um, applies all the changes that are needed and re-index the document. Both servers can use versioning to prevent changes being overwritten. And of course, it leads to decreased uh, traffic over your network. So if you have multiple updates and you need that, it's fine to use it. Uh, however, uh, you have to remember that you need to have the version in solar, also in Elasticsearch as well, and in addition to that, uh, you need to have those fields stored or, or in SOAR. If you don't have, you won't have the full documentary index, you will lose your data, some of it. Uh, the, same with, uh, the same with Elasticsearch, if you don't have source, you don't worry. Um, in Elasticsearch, there is a special, uh, special endpoint exposed, it uh, supports parameters similar to index API, so it's supports routing, uh, stuff like percolate, parent, and stuff like that, and, and things like that. And the Elasticsearch uses scripts to perform updates, and just a view of how such update works. It's a simple script that says that to set the field enabled to a value enabled, and the value is actually provided here. You can also set it uh, in a script, but Elasticsearch allows you to have multiple parents, so you can easily Edit. In solar, you, you said sent it to the update handler, which is now very fine. And great, it sees all the all the data. You, can, you don't have to use the JSON, CDS, and stuff like that. It requires version, as I said, and a simple a simple request uh, with the JSON setting for setting the enable true for the document with the provided ID. Uh, 
let's get a bit of manager. Uh, Sol provides collection API, which is built on top of Core Admin API. It actually uses Core Admin API and provides three operations. Well, collection creation, collection, collection reload, and collection deletion. You can, for example, create new collections on the fly, reload them to see the changes in the zookeeper uh, made to your configurations, and you can delete collections, and it's all made on the fly. You don't have to restart the servers, you don't need to do anything uh, other than uh, use the API. In Elasticsearch, we have similar, similar functionalities. The index creation deletion, in addition to that, you can close and open an indices. For example, if you have uh, your data uh, divided into days, for example, you create a new uh, index for each day, and you have those thousands. That can happen. You can close indices that you don't uh, want, but you don't want to throw them out away. For example, imagine that you search for 100 days of data. Uh, but some of the functionalities for example, for marketing department or any statistical features or applications, requires some amount of data, but rarely. So you can close that indice, those indices uh, during normal work and, for example, open them for night, do the processing, and then close them again. You, it will release some amount of resources, of system resources that may be needed during the normal search. Uh, in addition to that, you can refresh your index and check the existence of an index with an API call. API. Mm, now, the chain, chain definition. Uh, in SOAR, your field types uh, and the definition of your analysis is stuck in schema XML. You can, of course, divide it into dynamic fields, have multiple field types, but those can be only reloaded during uh, Runtime with collection corridor. You have to modify your schema, you have to put it in Zookeeper and below. In Elasticsearch, it can be both. Static in the Elasticsearch YML file, but it can be also defined during index type creation and, then, and it can be updated uh, to some extent again. You can't try change an integer to string or vice versa. But some of the mapping uh, updates are possible. Multilingual the data handling. As you know, Apache Solar wins that one because it's built on top of Lucene for All, and uh, Lucene for All provides much more uh, language, capability, language handling capabilities. Uh, for example, the new standard for my own language, like Polish, like the morphologic one. Uh, but they all, but uh, they all provide multiple language. Solar can have, of course, and again, I'll say that again. SOAR analyzers are defined per field in scheme. Elasticsearch analyzers can be defined in the mappings again uh, or in the uh, configuration file, but also can be set during query or specified per field basis uh, during requests or during queries. Uh, it allows you to choose the analyzer your query will be actually analyzed by in the current moment. So it's not only based on fields, but also based on the request parameters or query parameters you send. That's, that can be f very good when you know, for example, which language your query is. It's not, it's not easy because queries are usually small and uh, language analysis usually works better on large documents, but that can come, come in handy. Feature only reserved for SOL for now, results grouping, aka field collapsing, uh, allows for grouping based on field value, query, or a function query. Uh, I think the, the function query grouping is not available for distributed searching. Uh, at least that was uh, when I last checked it. Uh, again, now the thing that is not available in SOAR, the prospective search called in Elasticsearch as a collator. It allows you to register to inverse the search. Instead of uh, querying uh, for documents, you send the document and get queries in result. You store queries in the index calculator, in memory index code, a code in memory index, and uh, Elasticsearch returns the queries that were, uh, you send the document, and Elasticsearch returns the queries that you registered that match the given document. For example, imagine an alerting functionality that 
uh, that you use to monitor social, uh, social network services and when a brand, for example Coca-Cola or anything like that, comes up you want a query that matched it to uh, show up and that's what, can you, what prospective search can be used for Spell checker Again, not uh, present in Elasticsearch till now allows us to check and correct user spelling mist mistakes there are uh, multiple uh, implementations of albums or uh, index based spell checker the one that is uh, actually available for long period of time the word break spell checker direct spell, -spell, spell checker that is very good uh, new implementations incoming like the fuzzy one mm. great functionality uh, especially the direct soul spell checker which doesn't use uh, its own separate index uh, it's pretty fast and effective and returns uh, pretty nice results at least for English and Polish of course both search engines uh, provide variety of queries for full text searching you have the ability to control score calculation uh, you can have different query parsers available this is especially uh, in SOAR, when you have multiple query parsers, where you, use, where you can use multiple ones like this max, and this max, standard parser, field parsers, and of course you can use the spun queries, which are also available in SOAR in Elasticsearch. Mm, score calculation. Uh, what we are interested, at least uh, normally, in score calculation, uh, Control over document importance, query importance, and terms and phrases importance. Of course, there are f function queries and stuff like that, but let's only remember about those. And of course, the main scoring algorithms are based on the same similarities. Elasticsearch is only one implementation for now because in 361 uh, we didn't have the uh, scoring uh, functionalities of the, for all the scene and in a much story have uh, different and multiple uh, scene similarities and the uh, ease of extending and writing your own one is very it takes less effort than in a, than in Elasticsearch character. Mm. So the thing is index time boosting per document boost per field boosting and query time like term field phrase and function queries. So you all have that in SOAR. In Elasticsearch you have again document and field boosting, the query time. Uh, this is uh, something that are not available uh, in SOAR. Different query queries provide different boots, boost controls. You can count like distribute frequencies, neg negative and boots, positive boosting and custom score filters. The, the thing is, for example, when you uh, choose one of the queries in Elasticsearch, you can say that if a document comes from that index, uh, give it a boost of X. If, a query, if the document was found in the another index, give it another boost. That's pretty amazing, it's pretty fine, and can be used to uh, totally, uh, totally modify the scene scores returned. If you don't know Elasticsearch, you can look at, the, for example, the custom score filters, you can, there are some examples uh, of how to use it and how can it be, and how can it be uh, used in your real-time, uh, real-life applications. The same as negative and boost, positive, positive boosting. You can, for example, say that if that query, ma uh, that document matches that particular part of the query, you boost it higher. And if it, and if it only matches, for example, a term, a single term query, you can you negatively boost it. And it can be uh, done with a single request with a single JSON query. Nested objects possible only in Elasticsearch. Uh, there are indexed as uh, separate documents can uh, can lead to uh, lessen the memory uh, needed, for example, for uh, facet queries. Uh, for faceting, when you need to facet on, for example, multi multiple uh, multi-valued fields like tags that have. Uh, a variety of values, but in order to return them, you need an appropriate queries and queries and filters. Uh, there are, and when you search it normally, they are hidden from us, uh, for in the results. You don't you don't see them. Mm, more like this uh, allows you to find similar documents. Or there is uh, more like this component that can be defined as, as 
a component for your for your search handler, or it can be uh, defined, configured as a standard uh, handler. Uh, in Elasticsearch, you have two queries: uh, more like this query, more like this field queries, and the MOT REST endpoint to use them more like this functionality. You can you pretty do pretty much the same in both uh, when it comes to more like this. Uh, sole parent child relationship, or let's call it pseudo parent child relationship. It's used at query time, it allows multi core joins, and it uses the join parser to allow to, to for join documents on the fly. Uh, if you were to a, a talk from Kelly, uh, there was a talk about it. In Elasticsearch, you are forced to uh, properly index those documents. So you have the parent document and all the child documents needs to be pointed to that particular parent. And of course, similar to the nested documents functionality, standard queries doesn't return them. You need to, uh, in order to retrieve uh, child parent documents, you have to use, for example, has child, has parent, top children queries. Uh, in order to use filters, <coughs> in order to search and uh, Filters allow you to narrow down your results. All, everyone knows that. There are good candidates for caching, supported by Elasticsearch and Solar, and should be used for repeatable uh, elements in the queries in, uh, in for the most proper usage, let's call it, and for good caching. Uh, Apache Solar can have multiple filters per queries, filters are additive, uh, different query parsers can be used for filters, that's very good. Local params can be used, and of course, there are the, the filters narrow down the facility results. You need to uh, use local params in order to. Uh, you may be of the previous talk, there was a uh, local params usage to tag and excluding of facility results, of, filter, of filters uh, from facility. In Elasticsearch, filter queries can be uh, specified using the standard uh, query DSL. Uh, can be used for uh, manipulating scores and by default they doesn't narrow down faceting results uh, you have to use spe specific to faceting filters in order to uh, limit, limit your facets filter cache control both solar and elastic search lets us configure, control the filter cache for filters in solar you have the uh, local params in the cache property uh, and of course the cost one, which can, uh, which allows us to uh, turn off caching for a filter, for example, for uh, geospatial filters, which uh, may not be good candidates sometimes. In Elasticsearch, we have similar functionalities. We have the cache and the cache key uh, to use uh, where the cache, where on under which key uh, that particular value should be stored, or we can turn off the caching for a, for, for a filter. Only a few words about faceting. Both provide common facets like term range, term statistics, in solar called statistic component, spatial distance with function queries in solar, you can do that, uh, or range. Uh, solar, by the, uh, on the other hand, have the pivot faceting, which the Elasticsearch doesn't have, and Elasticsearch allows us to use histograms to calculate histograms for fields, mm, which is not a in solar. Both provide real-time gets, uh, which allows us to uh, get documents which were not yet indexed, uh, and uh, the NRT uh, index searches will not be open. Uh, Elasticsearch provides two endpoints, the get and multi-get APIs, uh, and uh, Apache Solar provides the real-time get handler, uh, to, and you can add it as a, sol uh, as a handler component in order to get your results whenever they were sent to index to index it. Five? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Both Elasticsearch allows you to warm your caches. Let's call it like this. And let's stop it. <laughs> I'll sorry, I'll scroll for the uh, uh, scroll the caching and stuff. You can of course uh, monitor your cluster 
Uh, in Apache Soul, there's the JMX and beans exposed. In Elasticsearch, you have multiple REST endpoints exposed to different statistics. You can get multiple statistics like index ones and stuff like that. Uh, just like here, node state check, nodes information, cache statistics, index segments and information, and mappings information can be retrieved. Uh, this is one of the, my monitors. Uh, you can do it like that, or you can do it like this, right? But uh, in addition to that, one thing I, will, I want to talk about um, before I could end is that Elasticsearch allows us to control rebalancing, recovery, allocation, and that, that above can be changed on a live cluster. Imagine that you would like, for example, to move your shards around in your cluster. For example, you know that nodes 2 and 3 from your cluster are, go are going to be restarted or thrown out or anything like that. You can say to Elasticsearch, hey, move the shards in replicas from that node to that node, that node, that node, and forget about it. It's done with a single API, API calls. Uh, it's actually a cluster level. Uh, if, you know, if you don't want to know what's about it, please get me after in the talk. But let's go to the commands of uh, routing and moving the shards. You can see that, for example, here you can move the shard 0 from the index semantex from node 1 to node 2. And, for example, an unallocated shard may be allocated to a node 3. That's possible on the fly, you can do that without any problems. Mm. And now the question for you all. Who the winner is? Is it Elasticsearch? Who goes for Elasticsearch? I thought so. No? No, throw your hands up. Okay. And is it Solar? Oh, don't be shy. Maybe it's a tie. Who goes for the tie? Uh, actually, I think that we are all the winners around here because the competition is very good. Uh, we got two great search servers based on the scene. We got all we need, actually. We can choose which is the best one for our current project, for our client's project. And let's hope that, style, that it will stay that way. Um, by the way, if you want to reach me or send a text, there is my Twitter tag, my mail, all the Semotex stuff. It's also there are also uh, solar uh, versus elastic, elastic search, sorry, a series of blog posts which will continue. Uh, I think that after the conference, the fifth part will be published and we will continue it. And if you are in on working with us, we are hiring. Thank you very much.
Uh, one question. Uh, we all know that um, uh, in one of the major uh, success factors of the software is the amount of companies and uh, openness of the project. So uh, you were just only uh, concentrating on technical aspects. So can you give me your personal opinion on uh, who's taking the users more seriously in, in, in that, that aspect, please? Actually, if we talk about taking the users seriously, uh, I don't think that uh, Elasticsearch or Solar doesn't take its users seriously. But the, but, but the community is larger for Solar, that's for sure. We all know, uh, even here around, the, around where we are, uh, the number of people that know solar and are familiar with solar are far greater, greater than the user user base of Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is still new, so, right? It got the buzz around I don't know one, two years ago, and it started growing. But uh, and it's still young, and it's, uh, only a few developers out there. Uh, you, the commuters base of Lucene and solar are far greater uh, than this. So if you would look like uh, in the, uh, from that point of view, uh, uh, solar has the advantage around here. Also, you will see that they are bound together right now after Trio, uh, and that's also uh, quite quite nice because what we've seen actually currently uh, gets it's also almost exactly almost at the same time for port to solar, right? So that's one thing. You see that currently Elasticsearch waits, uh, Elasticsearch users have to wait in order to get the 0, uh, 4, 0, uh, we see. So that's, that's, if, if that's answer your questions. Uh, okay, thank you very much once again. Yeah, yeah, you guys did an awesome job. Thank you very much.